Today, we are talking about the sales pipeline, you guys, and how to know at each stage of attracting clients, connecting with prospects, nurturing and building relationships that can result in paid design work, making offers and closing sales, these different stages of the sales pipeline. And feel free to insert um, another word instead of pipeline. I know that this is a, it's kind of a con connotation with oil. We'll call it maybe the sales caterpillar or something segmented. If you have an idea, please let me know. I am Pete Wyden with the Epic Eco Designer, and I am here today at a really, really beautiful spot on the St. Croix River I'm in Hudson, Wisconsin, overlooking this beautiful river. And uh, these are about five Native American burial mounds behind me and cars. And uh, some people planted some native wildflowers on these, which is really nice. This is a very sacred place and I like coming to very powerful, energetic places to do these videos for you guys because I think you're worth it. I know you're worth it. And um, it allows me to really channel some amazing stuff to move the eco-design world uh, forward in terms of our ability to have successful businesses and make a beautiful living doing beautiful work and healing the planet, in turn healing people, etc. So. The sales pipeline is a really important piece that a lot of business owners overlook. And the reason why is because we're not necessarily taught that sales is anything beyond, you know, as far as a designer goes, going to somebody's house, taking a look at their yard and giving them a quote. That's what a lot of designers are doing. And maybe you're doing that right now and maybe it's working for you. That's great if it is, but I'm sure that um, if you start doing things a little bit differently, give yourself a little more space to put together your offers for people rather than doing it right on the spot, you can make a lot more money and bring them a lot more value in the process. So attracting people, connecting with them, I've gone over that in other videos and so I'm not gonna spend as much time on that, but attracting is just getting people's attention, connecting is actually meeting them. So the idea of tabling at events, giving talks, um, you know, reaching out to garden clubs and um, you know, meeting people in your neighborhood and, and showing them your garden. There's so many ways, there's online, social media, you know, there's a, there's a lot of great ways depending on your personality and your type of business to get the word out there and attract people and connect with them, connect with really congruent prospects in your business. But what happens when you're actually trying to live in such a way that your business is just an extension of your personality? It really comes down to connecting genuinely with these people in, in settings that are really natural and that's not just a sales conversation. And a sales, the sales conversation can feel very natural and it should, although for many of us it, it doesn't because we're not necessarily taught um, how to be ourselves in sales versus just being feeling kind of pushy, feeling like um, you know we might be taking advantage of somebody and that's not, not real sales at all. That's um, a kind of soft coercion and, and getting your design work sold, your consulting services sold, doesn't need to feel like that at all. Uh, but what it really comes down to as far as the sales pipeline is that that's a tool to be able to know, you know, how much income do you have booked out? And if you don't have your income booked out to meet your revenue goals month to month, knowing that you can turn to a certain part of your sales pipeline, look at is it all if it's all functional or not, and find the parts in that chain that are either functioning well and don't need any attention or do need some attention. So it's really important to understand the health of your sales pipeline. So looking at, are you attracting people regularly to your business who are making inquiries? And are you allowing those connections to happen in a really easy way where you know how to initiate these connections with people to get on the topic of either their landscape, their farm, um, you know, their, their home environment and what's really going on for them. And if it's a good fit 
for you guys to talk further is really important to know you know if it's not it's great to have a conversation about you know somebody's kids basketball team or a trip to Asia but ultimately those aren't the things that are going to be making you money in your business so you want to be able to get really quick at making these connections and discerning really quickly whether or not this is somebody who you want to lead the conversation in a direction of more deeply about their landscape and what you're looking to do um, what you do professionally and what they're looking to do and if that lines up and another piece here I've talked a lot about building relationships but a really important part of actually selling is making offers and a lot of consultants just aren't actually making that many offers I think there's an assumption out there that if you make an offer to somebody to work together and they say no that there's something maybe wrong with you or the service you're offering what it often comes down to is that it takes some follow-up and creative follow-up to be able to make and close sales so you know if somebody says well hey we're going out of town um, so I think I think we're just not you know we're too busy right now to do this it's really important to be able to follow up to get at the the real reasons why they might be hesitating maybe it's because they think that the design process is going to be too overwhelming for them. Um, Maybe they actually have, like I had a client last year who was going to focus on the interior of their house for the summer. And so I allowed, you know, I I just said, okay, that's that's totally great. And I I just let that move into another part of my sales pipeline, which is the follow-up. So you're making a lot of offers more offers in terms of the dollar amount per month than your revenue goal is for example my revenue goal per month is ten thousand dollars if I was only making ten thousand dollars worth of offers per month in my business do you think I'd be hitting my income goals month to month I'd have to have a hundred percent close rate and so that's barring you know it's not allowing for life it's not allowing for uh, you know, somebody, maybe they got sick or lost their job. And, you know, I, I make so many offers to people for design work and for, um, I make more pointed offers to people for uh, design business mentorship. But I, I make so many different offers on a monthly basis that are aligned and that I feel are really uh, of benefit to both people. I'm not just making, you know, a ton of offers just to try and make money. But, you know, you come across so many different situations and there's a lot of different stuff that comes up. So if you're only making, you know, three offers per month and they're each for two to three thousand dollars and you're selling maybe one of those, it's not going to make up your your income goal unless you're living in a van and you're keeping your expenses super low. It doesn't allow for savings or future vision that takes financial resources to achieve in some way such as getting a piece of land for yourself so if you had a goal of of 10k per month for your design business I would recommend having $25,000 worth of offers out there at any given time I found that as I personally improved in my own uh, ability to make really relevant offers for people that really hit their needs on point and conveyed the value of what I was offering Um, as I got better at follow-up, uh, which this all starts with having a really authentic and close, uh, relationship with the people that you're even meeting with in the first place and being able to develop that rapport quickly and find common ground. Um, all these things feed into, for me, uh, 50% or higher actually close rate for the design proposals that I put out to people, the offers that I make. And it's because of that relationship building the aligned offer for them and the follow-up but what it really comes down to there is the follow-up because i could make i could have a great relationship with somebody make a great offer and then you know they go on vacation or their mom gets sick and you know i've had both of these things happen with clients i had an eighty five hundred dollar one and a half acre job um, sign on in last november when that client's mother was dying 
and somebody else just signed on with me for another $4,500 design for a half acre and they were about to go out of town for two weeks but I put an incentive uh, pricing incentive into my proposal and they signed on right away so it allows people to make powerful decisions that are really going to help them when you know some of these ways that can um, really clarify for people the benefits of moving forward quickly and also how clear it is to them of having an expert come on to their design experience and really help them live the life that they're looking to live, have the daily experience they're looking to have by bringing an expert on board, that being you. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of this. The sales pipeline has uh, multiple components and they're all equally important because without one piece, that pipeline is gonna start leaking. So here's to finding a new word instead of the sales pipeline, uh, the sales stream, we could call it. We're by the river here. I hope you guys have a beautiful um, evening or day wherever you are it's mother's day here so happy mother's day belated if you are a mother or have one i'm sure most of you do and this is just such a wonderful place to be here on this beautiful evening so let me know in the comments below what you got out of this video if you have any questions i'd be happy to to hash things out with you and uh, subscribe below to this channel as well we'll be doing a lot more of these i'm always coming up with new ideas inspired by these sacred spaces to bring more power to the eco design movement thanks a lot guys talk to you later